rectangular prism, okay? Basically, you can think of it as, as a 3D box, okay? Some sort of rectang rectangular shaped three-dimensional box. So the, the easiest way to look at it is just to sort of draw one. And, and I know you guys are gonna have an easy time at, at thinking about this, okay? There's part of it, goes on like this, goes on like this, okay, like this. Okay, there you go. There's your rectangular prism. And then, uh, you know, just for clarity, just for clarity in red, I'm gonna kind of draw the hidden lines here. You kind of have a hidden line in the back that goes kind of down like this, kind of like this, over like that. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about. It's a box, that's all it is. See, geometry is full of these fancy words. Rectangular prism, what does that mean? Well, here's a rectangular prism, it's a box. You have tons of them in your house. You're probably looking at some right now. Okay, so what we want to do is first define some terms and then we're going to calculate the surface area of this prism. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is define some terms. Okay, one of these flat sides of this prism is called a face. It is a face of, of, of uh, one of the faces of this uh, rectangular prism. Okay, this thing right here, I think you all would agree, is called the edge. But I'm just defining it just so you know what, what, you're, what terms you're supposed to use in your geometry class, okay? And in this corner, you really don't use the term corner in, uh, in geometry too much. You call it a vertex. Okay, so we're just getting some definitions out of the way. You have this rectangular prism. It's just a box. One of the sides of the box is called a face. Uh, here is an edge. Basically, as, as, a, as the two sides come together, it forms an edge. And one of the points down here is called a vertex. Now, notice you have six faces, okay, on this shape here. You know, one face here, two, three on the bottom, four in the back, five on this side, and six on this side. So if you count all the sides, you can just sort of get a cube out in front of you and count them. You'll find that, that every cube or every rectangular prism is going to have six faces, okay? So how are we going to find the surface area of this? And by the way, when I say the surface area of this prism, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the total surface area of all the faces added together. So that, that kind of tells you the answer how we're gonna tackle it. We're going to find the area of this face. We're gonna find the area of this face, this face, this face, the top, the bottom, the sides, and we're gonna add them all up. We're gonna have six faces, so we're gonna add up six little bitty surface areas, and that's gonna be the total area of this rectangular prism. Okay, but notice the nice thing about it is uh, all of the faces are rectangles. This is a rectangle, it's a rectangle on the bottom, rectangle on the sides. We already know how to calculate the area of a rectangle, just the base times the height, right? We've talked about that before. So you can use that knowledge and we will use that knowledge to calculate the surface area of this prism. So before we do that, let me go ahead and uh, redraw the prism and label some stuff. So let me go ahead and redraw that. Okay. Here's the top. Here is the front, here is the side, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for clarity in red. I'm gonna put this hidden line here. These are the lines that are, that are behind, okay? Something like that. It's not a perfect drawing, but you get the idea, okay? So let's do this, and this is actually very important that you understand this part. We're gonna label this direction the length. So we're gonna put an L here. This direction, this length, this is the length of this box. We're gonna label this direction the width, and we're going to label this to height, okay? Now we're doing that because when we calculate the areas, we're going to need to know the length, the width, and the height to calculate the areas, and we have to put some labels here so we can, we can actually follow it. Um, and, and it really, you know, in, in all honesty, it doesn't matter which, which side is the length and which side is the width and which side is the height. In, in the end, it, it will not matter. So, but for here, so I can derive the formula for you, this is what I've chosen for length and width and height, okay? So the total area, Total area, what's it gonna be equal to when you think about it? What's it gonna be equal to? Um, well, it's gonna be equal to the area of all of these faces, okay, added together, okay? And uh, if we do that, notice that, that this is a top, okay, and we can find the area there, and the bottom is gonna have the exact same area. Here's a side, and there's another side with exactly the same area. And here's a front and here's a back. Both of those have the same area. So let me go ahead and write something down here and uh, we'll explain it. The total area is going to be 2 times LH. Now what does that mean? What is L times H? This is the length of the, of the front 
and this is the height of this front. So this area of this front here is L times H. Because notice this is H up here, but it's the same H down here. This is the height of the box. This is the area. But and so so this is the area. But notice that the back is also there, and it has exactly the same size. So the, the area of the front and the back is two times LH. Okay, so that's part of the answer, plus two times LW. The length, okay, times this width is going to give you the area of the bottom of this guy, but there's also a top with exactly the same shape, so I multiply two LW, so I get the area of the bottom and the area of the top, and that's what this term means. And then the final thing is two times HW, okay? H times W is going to give me the area of the side, but there's also another side with exactly the same dimensions. So if I multiply 2 times HW, I get the area of this side and this side added together. So this is the total area of this rectangular prism. Um, you know, one of these terms deals with the area of the front and the area of the back added together. That's why there's a 2 here. One deals with the area of uh, the bottom and the top. That's why there's 2. And one deals with the area of this side and this other side over here, and that's why there's a 2 here. So you can rewrite this and you could say the area of the rectangular prism, we're going to do a little bit of simplification here, and we can just write it here, equals, we're going to pull out the two, that's all we're going to do, two parentheses, LH plus LW plus HW, and that's the area of a rectangular prism. Okay, so all you need to do when you do your problems uh, and try to calculate the area of a rectangular prism is just label the length, label the width, label the height, and make sure that you use the right numbers in the right spots in this equation and you will get the right answer. Okay? You will get the right answer. So let's go ahead and do a problem. Okay, first let me start by drawing this rectangular prism here. Okay. Okay, that's my re rectangular prism. This is three inches this is one inch, and this is two inches. Okay, the question is what is the surface area of that rectangular prism? What is the surface area? First thing you need to do is label your sides so that you don't get confused. So let's call the length equal to three, the width equal to one inch, and the height is equal to two inches. And we're using the same exact labeling system that we used back before when we derived this stuff. So the area is equal to two times, with using the formula, LH plus LW plus HW. So the area is equal to two times L is three, okay, H is two, plus L is three, and W is one, plus H is two, times W is one. Now notice we have a lot of multiplication and addition going on, and remember from your order of operations in algebra, you always do the multiplication first. Okay, three times two is six, plus three times one is three, plus two times one is two. And I can continue on down and say, okay, this is two, and six plus three is nine, plus two is 11, okay? And then, so then the area is going to be equal 22, and I'm dealing with inches, and this is area, so this is inches squared, or square inches. 22 square inches. Alrighty. Okay. So, let's go ahead and work another problem. Let's say we have something that looks like this. Okay. And this is labeled as 7 foot and this is three foot, and this here is one foot. Okay, first thing we have to do is label the length, the width, and the height so we can use our formula. The length, we're gonna say is seven foot using our convention. The width is three foot using our convention, and the height is one foot uh, using our convention. And so then the area, which is just the formula that we learned, is two times LH plus LW plus HW. That's just what we learned. And so then L is 7 times H, which is 1, plus L is 7 times W, which is 3, plus H is 1 times uh, W, which is 3. 
Okay. So the area is going to equal to 2 times in the parentheses. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 7 times 3 is 21 plus 3 times 1 is 3 like this. And so then the area uh, is going to equal 2. Okay. 7 plus 3 is 10 plus 21 is 31. And 31 times 2 is 62. Okay. And we're dealing with feet and this is area. So it's foot squared. So you see all we're doing is we're doing the same thing over and over again and that's the last problem we're going to do of this type. You label your length, width, and height and you use your area formula and just make sure you plug in the right values and then you'll get, you'll get the answer and always make sure that your unit has to be in terms of uh, square feet or square inches or square centimeters or whatever it is you're dealing with because area uh, is always going to, going to have that form. Okay. Now We've talked about the rectangular prism, which is just a general shape of a rectangle that's three-dimensional. Now we're going to talk about really a subset of that, which is the surface area that's SA of a cube, which really it's exactly the same formula, but it's, it's somewhat simpler. So let's draw a cube now. Okay, This is a cube, which means all of the sides of the cube are the same length. Okay, All the sides are the same length. So instead of length, width, and height, I have length. And I do have width, but it's the same, it's the same length as, as this dimension, so I'm going to put L here. I'm going to put L for the height. So, so this does have length, width, and height, but because they're all the same in a cube, I'm just going to put L everywhere because it's the same number. So this is a number like 3 inches, and this would be 3 inches, and this would be 3 inches. So I'm going to put L everywhere because it's really the same thing. Okay. So the surface area, remember, let me just write something over here real quick. The surface area of the rectangular prism was uh, 2 times LH plus LW plus HW. That's, that's what it was for the general form. But everywhere in here where I see H and W, I'm just going to put L because it's the same number. That's, that's what I'm doing. I'm simplifying this complicated looking formula, taking advantage of what I know about a cube to be true. So it's going to be 2 times L times L plus L times L plus L times L. And all I did here was I used the fact I use the fact that H was equal to L and W was equal to L. So I plug H is equal to L here, W is equal to L here, H is equal to L here, W is equal to L here, and you get L's everywhere. So I just wrote that down. So let's simplify this. This is 2 times L times L is L squared. L times L here is L squared. L times L here is L squared. Okay, L squared plus L squared plus L squared is 3L squared. And 2 times 3L squared is 6L squared. So the surface area of a cube, okay, is just simply 6L squared. Okay, it's 6L squared. Now you see this formula is a whole lot simpler than this, okay? Um, but it's doing the same thing. You're calculating the area of each face in both cases. It just looks a little different because in this case, the length of all the sides happen to be exactly the same. So, you know, you get, you get a little bit of a, of, a, of a bonus because of that. It makes it a little bit simpler. That's why your books will have a different formula for the cube, even though it's doing the same thing. So if you had a drawing that looks something like this on your test, and it, it told you, hey, here's a cube, and find the surface area, but they only gave you, you know, one, um, one, one dimension. They only gave you one uh, um, um, dimension of one of the sides of the cube. Then you would have to, to to know that this cube has the same the same width, the same height, and the same uh, the same length. And you'd have to apply that. So the surface area is equal to six l squared. The length of this uh, cube is definitely 6 because, uh, because all the sides are the same. So you just have 6 times 2 squared is 6 times 2 times 2 is 4. And uh, 6 times 4 is 24. Okay, so it's 24. And uh, because you're dealing with centimeters and because this is area, it's centimeters squared. So that's the answer. This is uh, 24 square centimeters for a cube two centimeters on a side. So this is doing the exact same thing. You're using the formula for the general form of the rectangular prism, the area of it, and you're using the fact that all of the sides, the length, width, and height, are all equal to each other to derive a very simple formula. Surface area of the cube is six times one of the lengths of its side squared, and so then you can apply that to any problem involving a cube. So you see, this is another example of when you can draw pretty complicated looking pictures like these three-dimensional things and it can scare you off and make you upset and, and, and not know what to do. But if you know what, what, the, uh, 
what the formulas are telling you and how they were derived, it can go a long way to helping you solve your problems. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.